Hi, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. I'm on Team Celestron and I want to tell you about why Mars is so cool and why the Mars 2018 opposition is particularly cool. I am freaking excited. So the Earth and Mars have eccentric orbits. And as they orbit the Sun, every now and then, Mars passes particularly close to the Earth. Now the closest approach was in 2003, and we're not going to see anything like that for a long time. In fact, 60,000 years. That was a really, really close one. However, this year is a perihelion opposition. Now that means that Mars is particularly close to the Sun at the same time it's particularly close to the Earth. So a few really cool things are going to happen, not the least of which is an actual full total lunar eclipse. Now, you guys in the Northern Hemisphere probably won't see this, but here in the Southern Hemisphere, in Australia where I'm from, we will get to see a total lunar eclipse. At the same time, Mars will be particularly close to the full moon, which is amazing. Another really cool thing is that Mars's apparent size is just getting bigger and bigger, and in two weeks' time, it's gonna be really huge. You'll see in these two images I took only a few nights ago that Mars is huge, even compared to Saturn. It's actually outshining Jupiter right now in the night sky. So this is a fantastic opportunity for astrophotographers to image Mars up close and personal. But what about the weather? You might have heard there's a dust storm on Mars at the moment, and that's true. There's a dust storm that's covering the entire planet. Mars doesn't do things lightly. The good news is, this is the closest view of a Martian dust storm we're going to get to see in years. So opposition will be around the 27th of July, but basically any time around that date is good for imaging the red planet. Now if you've got a colour camera like the Next Image 10, you can use this to grab video of the red planet and then stack it in software. I particularly like Auto Stack It 2, I think it has great results. If you're using a mono camera, you have to use R, G and B filters. And remember that because of our atmosphere, the blue filter might look a bit scattered compared to the rest. That's okay. I do recommend taking a luminance. So if you're using a mono camera, get a black and white image of just the full spectrum, the whole lot, and then lay your color over that luminance layer. Now, another reason Mars is so fantastic to photograph is because we can see the weather. It's one of the only other planets besides the gas giants where we can look and physically observe the weather. At any given time, we can see clouds in the Martian atmosphere, we can see the ice caps depending on the season, and like now, we can see a full-scale dust storm across the entire planet. At the moment, the ice poles are really visible, so make sure that your blue channel has a nice level because that will bring out those ice caps quite nicely. Of course, for any planetary photography, you just want to make sure you're using the highest focal length telescope you have. Uh, you can use magnifiers like a Barlow lens, depending on where the ecliptic lies where you are. Just find out the highest potential place that Mars will be in the sky and try and photograph from there. If you haven't seen the next Image 10, this is a fantastic high-speed color camera from Celestron. And it's amazing. I have to say, the cable is actually heavier than the camera. It's tiny, but it's got a wonderful chip that samples really nicely, and that oversampling will help you get more detail out of your planetary data. So that's all I've got to say about the Mars Opposition 2018. But be sure to share your images of Mars with me and with Celestron. We look forward to seeing them. Good luck and clear skies. Thank you.